dry and abandoned. Thirsty and searching for just a sip of mercy, but all I can see ends up being a mirage. Raindrops seem to skip me like rocks. Why am I so easy to leave? Unpicked, unable to speak. Being unheard is the same as being unseen. Wilted and afraid, regretful and ashamed, unaware of habitual harassment, my petals are stained. Some are absent. Check me. Covered in dirt, pretending I hate is more acceptable than admitting I hurt. Wilted and tormented, my torrential tears aren't enough to nourish this thirst. My roots are anchored in a shadow. The sun simply burns my bloodshot eyes and shines a spotlight on the evidence that I'm wrong. Forgotten. Potpourri may be my only chance to be severed from these roots that choke me. Yes, don't just burn me to make use. Mixing my dry skin with spice, stirred in a bowl to soothe the inhale, the scent of my remains and recline in their careless domain where I, I wasn't suitable to grow. I know, I'm not presentable to show. A vase would reject me, lace would likely disrespect me. They never want me to be seen. I'd never be cast for the scene where the girl in love peels back the layers of me, asking my petals to answer her hopeful question. Does he love me? However, I can't help but notice the dirt that splashes on me is the same as all the others. So why am I so ashamed of my distressed colors? Wilted and confused, now intimate with abuse, I felt charmed with the false yet friendly feeling of darkness. Almost serene, like a leaf floating gently down the stream, alone with my thoughts, wishing daydreams would intervene. But I'm starting to see a homecoming, a cheer for the winning team. My jersey that reads misery is no longer an option. Despair has revealed itself as a prison cell, and I seek adoption. I can't cower forever in the familiar shade I was planted in. Like a recluse that got caught, entangled in a web she didn't spin again. Again. And again. And again. I need to lean in to the love. Wilting and molting. Fever is melting the memories my trauma froze. Ripping like wax, petals dance as they gracefully descend, disassembling in the wind until all that's left is a bare skin. Wilted and kneeling, I spent so much time feeling overwhelmed, striving to pick up the fallen petals, prying them off the ground, desperately trying to rehydrate them. I hold them together with both strength, coping, only coping by coloring them in with leftover paint, hoping I'd pass as a living rose. But it would never last. I'd start itching from the dryness, a rash that resembled shyness, unmasked. I hid my puncture wounds, tucked inside my mind as I continued to collapse. I feared relapse as I watched. Petals I was so attached to fade. Left. Wilted and healing. I was left skin and peeling in conditions so cold it took ditching my own protective petals that served as an army with shields as they lowered their smoke screen. It allowed the gardener to mend, settle, and heal my soul, transplant and expose, swarmed by thorns, recounting every petal that fell with each one a story to tell someone else that he loves me. Never did he love me not. My soul is bought, my ground transformed, my thorns matured into sharpened swords, twisting together, resembling a 
crown like the one my king wore when the veil was torn. So I thought they loved me not, but who were they to save me? I'm redeemed. I'm free. And now with every petal to ever fall again, I'll always be reminded that he does love me. And though the broken pieces still have beauty, the old has passed away. My life may fade, but it will never decay. As he resurrects all new petals, blooming with his name, a heavenly arrangement. A holy bouquet. He once prayed in his own garden, on the eve of being betrayed and wept with precious crimson grace. Hanging on a tree, his crown sat crooked on his head, the crowd not knowing he'd sit perfectly on a throne in just a few days. They mispronounced him as dead. Then as puddles of sovereign blood evaporated, death evacuated, he rose. And now that same crimson grace fell down on me like rain, watering the flower bed, repainting a wilted rose. Red. out of my book. I changed it a little bit for a spoken version, but it's kind of like if you don't want to read the book, here's the movie. Um, just everything in one shot here. Um, but it kind of tells my story all in one, too. Um, I had a broken childhood, broken family, broken surroundings, and that led to a broken heart and a broken mind and broken relationships because of trauma and trust issues and all of the various things that comes along with that anxiety um, fighting off depression, all of that, um, which is super common, but it's hard to talk about sometimes, which is why I did this. I, I didn't have anybody to really talk about when I was younger, like really going through it, and I learned how to express all the hard stuff through art and through creativity. So I don't hide the hard stuff ever, but I do include hope. And for me, that hope was in my faith in Christ. So. All of these pieces are through that lens a little bit. 